like on this video, it's the more straightforward needling, and you're going from a super temporal approach, which is my preferred first option. Yeah, certainly in some other cases where you know maybe a loculated subtenon cyst, you may have to enter more superiorly or supranasally, you know, just to attack the bleb at a different angle. I think that's right and you know one of the beauties of being under topical anesthesia of course is that you do have that option of asking the patient to to shift their gaze mm -hmm. and uh, it can be very difficult can't it you know a deep set left eye mm -hmm. gaining access to the bleb can be very challenging and you know again I never enter the bleb with that needle tip until I've got total control of that operative field. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I find if, say, the patient is uncomfortable topically, uh, I will put in beforehand some subconjunctival, say, narapin, uh, which is quite nice to give them a bit more anaesthesia. So, yeah, if the patient is uncomfortable with the topical, subconjunctival anaesthetic can be also useful. Yeah, I think that's another good technique. Occasionally, again, I'll, I'll put a, uh, a swab soaked in local mm. anesthesia, you know, on the ocular surface, yeah, sure. or um, even just an absolute tiny amount of sedation, you know, if the patient's in um, under operative conditions in the theatre, sure. you know, can be extremely sure. helpful. Um, everything really to avoid movement, isn't it? Mm. Mm. And, and just putting in the 5-FU at the end, like it's interesting, I, I use 5% 5-FU. Uh, I notice you prefer 2.5% five for few, but uh, yeah, I find you know, even the five percent dose uh, generally is, is has been safe uh, over the years. Um, is there a reason you you use 2.5? Yeah, I mean you probably know from my practice I'm fairly minimalist on all adjuvant mm. therapies. You know, five FU and um, even mitomycin are always go for the lowest mm. dose possible um, on the grounds that that is the single most common cause of loss of eye is an anti-metabolite related mm. complication. Mm. Um, but in the bleb needling scenario, it's particularly because you can't always control whether the patient has involuntary blepharospasm afterwards. You know, say after peribulbar anesthesia, the patient's got anesthetic for anesthesia for a long time afterwards, they don't squeeze their eyes, whereas in uh, topical anesthesia surgery, sometimes patients can develop blepharospasm, and I, I just worry a little bit about, uh, you know, the limbal stem cells and the mm. ocular surface. If you enjoyed this lecture so far, please subscribe to http colon forward slash forward slash op dot vision. I hope you enjoy this series as much as we have putting it together. Thank you.